Today's recipe is a really creamy and delicious chicken duvon. Do you know what that is? It's a chicken casserole with a creamy sort of mustardy sauce that gets served over egg noodles. And it's designed to use up leftover chicken, which is I think how it was originated. But today I'm making it with fresh chicken just because I didn't have any leftover chicken and it's so delicious you're not gonna wanna miss it. One of the delicious flavors in this chicken divan is eight ounces of mushrooms and they're gonna get sauteed before I move forward with my sauce. But I've started off by cooking one and a half pounds of chicken in a skillet. And like I said, this can be done with leftover chicken. I think it's really designed to use leftover chicken. Like most casseroles were designed to use leftovers. But I'm starting from fresh chicken, and if you're doing that as well, start with one and a half pounds of chicken, and you can just brown them in a skillet. I also have some broccoli here, and the broccoli is also pre-cooked. Same thing. All of these ingredients were generally used as leftovers, um, and you throw everything together, bind it together with a creamy sauce, and you have a delicious dish. You'll also need an onion, so while the second side of my chicken is browning, I'll cut up my onion. You know my philosophy, ABP, always be prepping. No, so you only need a small onion here. Small onion minced will yield about one cup, so one cup of onion. If you have a larger onion, use half. So mince your onion. I think that my preference for this would be, if you're not really good at mincing, you can't get it super fine, pulse it in a food processor because you don't want big clunky pieces of onion. Another thing when you're cutting onions, and I say this over and over and over again, is you want your knife to be really sharp. I think my knife actually needs to be sharpened, uh, which is why I'm having not the best success at mincing. I'm doing okay though. All things considered, I think I'm doing okay, but I'm gonna definitely sharpen my knife when I'm done with this. The sure sign of a sharp knife is that when you cut through all of your onion, nothing splays out and you don't get all those little bits flying all over the place. That's a good sharp knife. I'm halfway between a good sharp knife and really needing to sharpen my knife. Okay. So you're gonna saute the onion, take the chicken out of the pan. That was sauteed in two batches, so it got nice and brown in about four tablespoons of butter. And I have two more tablespoons of unsalted butter to saute my onion in. So add the butter, two more tablespoons, and add the onion. The moisture from the onion should be enough to get up some of those brown bits on the bottom of the pan without needing to add any liquid. I'm deglazing with the onions, basically. As always, season with some salt and pepper. Stir, and then add your mushrooms. You wanna saute till the mushrooms start to turn golden brown and they've released some of their liquid. And that can take about six to seven minutes depending on how hot your heat is. So keep an eye, keep stirring, and don't let your onions burn. So when your mushrooms have cooked down and they're starting to soften, you can add your thickener. It's three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And I actually like to add my mustard at this point before I add my liquid so that it doesn't clump up in the liquid. The recipe actually calls to add it later, but I'm a rogue. Two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Stir that together. And you can see the flour is already starting to sort of dry onto the bottom of the pan. So I'm gonna turn my heat down and start adding my milk. It's three cups of milk. I'm gonna add a little bit and just scrape up the bottom of the pan. I was getting a little nervous. <laughs> Just gotta watch that pan, because it can go from perfect to burnt in a quick sec, and the flour really enhances that, speeds it up a little bit, so keep an eye. And then add your milk just a little bit at a time. You can use a whisk here, but because there's already mushrooms in there and there's the onions, it can tend to get stuck in the whisk. So I just really, wouldn't say aggressively, but vigorously stir with my spoon and add a little bit of milk at a time and scrape up anything from the bottom. 
and then once you've added enough of the milk, you'll be able to add more and more quickly without it forming lumps. So now I'm turning the heat up. It needs to come to a boil in order for the flour to activate and thicken and adding all the rest of my milk. Like I said, three cups total. Bring that to a boil. Let it boil for like, you know, a minute-ish. This is three cups of cheese. Two cups are gonna go into the sauce. I'm also going to add one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce for depth of flavor and a little bit of cayenne pepper. So this needs to reduce and thicken a little bit. It should simmer, stirring occasionally for about nine minutes. Then I'm going to turn mine off and stir in two cups of this cheese. Save a cup for the topping and a half a cup of sour cream. Then you add this to your pound and a half of broccoli. Pour your sauce over the broccoli. So I have my broccoli in a really big bowl. Add the chicken. Also have your oven preheating to 400 degrees. Forgot to say that. Don't forget that part. Though of course you can make this ahead of time if you want to. Stir everything together and then transfer to an 8x8 baking dish. Oh my god, that looks great already. It's gonna be full, but it does fit. And then it does get a topping, like a crunchy breadcrumb topping. So this is one cup of panko breadcrumbs mixed with the remaining cheese, that's another cup, and two tablespoons of melted butter. Because what's a casserole without a crunchy cheesy topping? <laughs> Not a casserole, obviously. And then you just sprinkle that over the top and it's gonna bake in the 400 degree oven until it is bubbling and golden brown on top and even more delicious looking than it is now. That usually takes about 25 minutes, especially if the filling is already warm, which mine is not too long. When the casserole comes out of the oven, let it sit for a few minutes so that it sets up just a little bit before you serve it and so you don't burn yourself and then serve it over egg noodles or over rice, whatever is delicious for you for a comforting and delicious meal. Give it a try. Mm. Mm. So good, you guys are really gonna love this one. If you like recipes like this and you want more, make sure to click like and subscribe because we have plenty more where this came from.